Hi everybody, it is February 16, 2018. Wow, 2018. We are far into the redesigning of our world that works for a very few, and I no longer want to say that word, elite. And I know subscribers got angry at me for saying the word elite. They recommending something a little bit better, kind of like, I don't know, the psychopathic, miserable, disgusting parasites. Perhaps that's what they need to be called because that's what they are. Michael Krieger, Insanity Fatigue. I'm going to read the entire article because he sums up where we are presently, what we are living. Oligarchs, though they speak of deconstructing the administrative state, actually increase deficits and the size and power of law enforcement and military to protect their global business interests and ensure domestic social control. The parts of the state that serve the common good wither in the name of deregulation and austerity. The parts that promote the oligarch's power expand in the name of national security, economic growth, and law and order. If you've been checking in with this site, with his site, which I will link to below. If you've been checking in with this site in recent days, you may have wondered if I was on vacation. I'm not. Rather, I've been suffering from a bit of sluggishness and writer's block, and it wasn't until I took some time to think about why earlier this morning that I was able to determine the cause of my affliction. The best way to describe what I've been dealing with in recent days is insanity fatigue. How many are you? How many of you are experiencing insanity fatigue? That is a good term to describe how I have been feeling increasingly, certainly over the last two years. I could deal, I could deal, I could deal, I could deal. Suddenly I found myself not wanting to go to any of my news sites, not wanting to click on Drudge, because all of it is insanity. And it's an insanity that has played over and over and over and over again. Yes, the names change, the locations change, the details change, but it's the same insanity that we're trapped in. And what it does is it brings you down when you can see it for what it is. And you can't participate in it. Do I post a video on the latest school shooting? Do I post videos on the abject insanity that we have been experiencing with our mainstream media, the White House, the Russian probe? Do I post videos on the memo? Oh, another drama thrown out for Americans. That memo release that was simply yet another Yet another drama staged. Hey, let's get into this. A memo release. And if Trump was genuine, then he would have worked to release those applications to the FISA court, because that's where the facts are. A memo release from and voted on by a committee, voted on party lines. Republicans say, yay, we want it released. Democrats say, no, we don't want it released. And what do you get? You get an awful lot of insanity. These Democrat, Democrat, what are they? Sick, disgusting scum, okay, scum. Nancy Pelosi. 
and all the rest, saying that, oh, the Republicans, they had misinterpreted it, or it's a misrepresentation of the facts. <laughs> and Americans don't know, because they don't have the application that was submitted to the FISA court. They only have that memo that was drafted by a Republican. Yay! So the two sides go at it, and we get to just be at one another's throats once again. So engaged, so obsessed with this memo release And more bombs are being dropped. All of the agendas continue to accelerate. Insanity. We focus on those crazy, unbelievably crazy, staged plays that have been coming out of Washington, D.C. for my entire life, only getting more and more in your face obvious that we are one hell of a, hell of a insane country filled with insane people, not just those disgusting, parasitic, evil few but ordinary Americans who can't seem to take a step back and look at things objectively. They get so easily manipulated into the insanity. So, quite right, it's not as if there's been a lack of news or things to talk about. No, we always have something to talk about here in our country. There is plenty. The problem is, I've once again become exhausted and overwhelmed by the superficial stupidity and narcissism of our national political dialogue. I first expressed this sentiment about a year ago in a piece lost in the political wilderness, and the feeling came back in spades in recent days. It's been a year since I wrote that post and not much has changed. The political conversation, if you can call it that, remains largely polarized between two groups primarily focused on whether they support Trump or swear he's Putin's devilish puppet. One side insists he's going to make America great again, while the other thinks everything was perfectly fine before his election and all will be well as long as we can rid ourselves of Trump's presence. Meanwhile, the oligarch class continues to loot and pillage at will. It's actually quite extraordinary that a people so systematically, systemically, and obviously preyed upon cannot see what's right in front of them. It's mind-boggling that tens of millions are so easily divided, divided and conquered into manufactured tribes intent on avoiding, at all costs, what's really going on in this country, such as a fraudulent financial system, endless imperial wars, and the ever-encroaching surveillance state? Long story short, we as a people simply refuse to accept what's really causing the rot in this country and continue to be mesmerized by bread, circuses, and opportunist oppor opportunistic pundits on mainstream media, leading us straight into oblivion. oblivion. Huh. And as the frequencies are being used as weapons against us, and as more and more are falling, let's talk about that memo! I suppose this is always the way. It is at the end of a failing and bankrupt empire. It's just extraordinary to watch it happen in real time. Yep, we are at the end, watching the collapse. 
living the collapse of the United States. The total insanity of the political debate in this U.S. in this United States and a lack of any willingness to admit our real systemic problems, let alone face them, is what convinces me, without a doubt, that this train is headed straight into a brick wall. That's not to say other countries are in fine shape. They aren't. The whole planet's become entangled in America's increasingly corrupt, militaristic, and fraudulent empire, imperial, financial system. Escape will not be clean or easy for anyone. Nevertheless, the U.S. has the furthest to fall, given it is the world's dominant power armed with the global reserve currency. Oh, we are going to fall hard. Millions have already fallen. The boiling frog scenario, strategy that they have been using for decades. And when you fall, I am telling you, it hurts. And it's coming to everyone. It's coming to everyone. The escape will not be clean or easy for anyone. Nevertheless, the U.S. has the furthest to fall, given it is the world's dominant power, armed with the global reserve currency and empire with such an overwhelming structural advantage can last a lot longer than it should in the face of monumental incompetence. But the day of reckoning is coming. Meanwhile, Trump isn't addressing any of the major structural issues we face, like our fraudulent and corrupt financial system, endless and pointless imperial wars, or the ever-expanding surveillance managed and controlled by the unelected deep state. Sure, he talks a good game sometimes, but the core elements of the U.S. empire continue to expand in power and hubris with virtually zero resistance. Hillary Clinton would have done much of the same while deflecting criticism as sexist. Yes. Oh, hasn't she worked that? For her entire career in public office, everything is about, yeah, well, they're sexist. They don't like the fact that I'm a woman. And Americans believe the horseshit sold to them every single day. Yeah, you get tired of it. You get fatigued. If the general public, which means you, me, all of us here on social media, all of us out there living our lives, if the general public refuses to confront are real issues that politicians and bureaucrats sure as heck aren't going to. As such, it appears, imperial implosion is inevitable at this point. Chris Hedges recently wrote a piece on oligarchy at Truthdig and the role it plays in imperial collapse. This is an excerpt. Oligarchs accelerate social, political, cultural, and economic collapse. The unchecked plunder leads to systems breakdown, and we are breaking down, all systems breaking down. The refusal to protect natural resources or the economic engines that sustain the state means that poverty becomes the norm and the natural world becomes a toxic wasteland. Hey, that's what's happened. That's what we're living. Basic institutions no longer work. Infrastructure is no longer reliable. Water, air, and soil are poisoned. The population is left uneducated, untrained, impoverished, oppressed by organs of internal security and beset by despair. The state eventually goes bankrupt. Oligarchs respond to this steady deterioration by forcing workers to do more for less and launching self-destructive wars in the vain attempt to restore 
a lost golden age. Can't we get it back? Trump's going to bring it back. He's going to make America great again. And it ain't happening. They also insist, no matter how bad it gets, on maintaining their opulent and hedonistic lifestyles. They further tax resources of the state, the ecosystem, and the population with suicidal demands. They flee from the looming chaos into their gated compounds, modern versions of Versal Versalis, God, my pronunciation, or the Forbidden City. They lose touch with reality. In the end, they are overthrown or destroy the state itself. There is no institution left in America that can be called democratic, and thus there is no internal mechanism to prevent a descent into barbarity. This is where we stand now. The system is breaking down in a very serious and dangerous manner as a result of decades of unaccountable oligarch plunder, a historic theft aided and abetted by politicians, intelligence agencies, and corporate media, which provide the necessary backbone to keep oligarchy entrenched and the public confused and bickering about endless superficialities. If a thoughtful public backlash based on incisive analysis and energy capable of reforming this imperial oligarchy was coming, it would have arrived. By now, it's not coming. Thus, imperial collapse is all but guaranteed. My guess is it'll probably all be over by 2025 at the latest. And isn't that just remarkable how shy it is, his prediction, of their Agenda 2030 goal. Oh, a lot more is to come. A lot more destruction. And you, sitting, listening to this video, you who are still comfortable, when will you be hit? Oh, because I've had subscribers who in the first years that I was posting, they were okay. You know, they were okay until they were not. They got hit. Whether it was loss of job, loss of home, a weather event deliberately created to take them out, they got hit. And there is still, for those who don't or have not yet been hit, there's this normalcy bias, there's this idea that you're invincible, that it will never happen to you. Well, no one, no one can escape what is coming. Although it may appear that way my message isn't one of doom and gloom after all it's clear to me that the US Empire isn't helping the typical American anyway <laughs> that's yeah you know when you think about all of those people oh my god you're a Debbie Downer all you do is fear monger oh yeah 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 and the same people who leave those comments right in their own community people are being taken out Rather, our system of predatory imperial oligarch is more akin to a parasitic albatross around our collective necks, sucking away our spirit, wealth, and liberty to enrich and empower a handful of empty and voraciously greedy, sick, disgusting sociopaths who care about nothing but themselves. I don't claim that the transition period will be smooth or painless, but I do harbor a great deal of optimism about what the future can and will look like on the other side. Younger, 
generations understand as much as anyone how corrupt, fraudulent, and unsustainable the system and its institutions are. Meanwhile, thoughtful and brilliant people globally are working day and night to create the necessary rails for a decentralized future in which we can reduce the need to trust institutions and individuals, hopefully ushering in a new paradigm characterized by greater transparency, ethics, liberty, and an opportunity for a vastly improved experience for humankind. The current paradigm will end. I'm completely confident of that. The real question is, what will we build afterwards? On that front, I remain encouraged and excited, but we must all do our part to create the world we wish to see. It's imperative. We spread love and knowledge and trust that we demonstrate through our actions and work what it means to be a courageous, ethical, and honorable human being brimming with infinite spirit and consciousness. If we accept these challenges, we shall not only overcome, but we shall prosper, leaving our children and grandchildren a world they can be proud of. Nothing is more important and meaningful than that. Right? Let me read that last paragraph again because it's important. It's imperative we spread love and knowledge and proactively keep in our mind on a conscious level all the time that you act and speak in ways to create trust in your relationships, in your community, and the ripple effect of that will go out to the bigger society. Trust is essential and love and trust you cannot that they're not mutually exclusive you cannot love and betray and lie if you love then you have to honor honor truth and honor trust essential to building a, a, a strong force of good that we demonstrate through our actions and work what it means to be a courageous, ethical, and honorable human being brimming with infinite spirit and consciousness because if you're not doing that then you are pulling other people down and we need to be up. So if we accept these challenges, we shall not only overcome, but we shall prosper, leaving our children and grandchildren a world that they can be proud of. Nothing is more important and meaningful than that. And if you're not working towards that, then what the hell is your life about? I'll link below to the article.